Witness testimony, what Larry heard. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an old request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real booming loud, like. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. What? You were listening to your radio at a high volume? Yeah, what's the problem? Can a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. <laughs> Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? Sure. What he heard was probably nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? <laughs> An announcer, the guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. <laughs> What Larry heard. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. <laughs> Where's your girlfriend? <laughs> so you turned on the radio. Right. I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know. You don't know what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve, alone. I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> That's why I was listening to an all request show on the radio, see? Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Sure it does. Objection sustained. No, it does. <laughs> the witness was listening to the radio. That's all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butts, how loud was your radio set to that night? I was listening to it real booming loud like... Real booming loud? Yeah, you know. And you had headphones on? Yep. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. Can you prove that? No, 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 of course you can't. <laughs> nah, I can't prove it. But I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back real clear to me, you know? I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. What was he saying? What did she say? Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what the DJ, radio DJ said to us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I will allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. Why should we care? Why should we care what the DJ was saying? Real booming loud. Doesn't the DJ announce the time, usually? We should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Well, how do you know if we don't ask? <laughs> Fine, very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Almost Christmas. It was before midnight. Are you sure? Of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. Hmm, maybe Van Kama was right, I'm not sure how to help. No, it... No, it was... <laughs> it's almost Christmas. Present! It was before midnight, and then this is, this is midnight. He heard the first shot, not the second. The witness's statement is clearly faulty, Your Honor. Dot dot dot. I'm sorry, but I can see- No! Yes! What? Ah, oh, come on. This stupid game. 
It's almost Christmas head. <laughs> Why? Why is that wrong? Why does it keep saying I'm wrong? Oh, two gunshots after midnight. <laughs> no, but there was a third bang before mid. <laughs> Unbelievable! This stupid ass game. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? No, there were three shots. There were three shots. Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easily. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor! Did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas, when he heard the gunshot. Indeed, and... Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But that contradicts the two testimonies we have heard so far, Your Honor. Both Miss Hart and the old man said it was after midnight when they heard the shots. In other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. <laughs> there were three shots. Obviously there were three shots. The gun fired three times. Come on, it's, this is so stupid. Why do you have to take so long to get to the obvious thing? What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Nope. Just look at him. Suspicious. <laughs> that is true. He is suspicious. He's not lying though. <laughs> mm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butt's claim he heard the gunshot before midnight? Larry's right. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. Oh, now you want this. Look at this photograph. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on this photo reads December 24, 11.50pm. Oh. Mm. But there is nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Correct! There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50pm. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that is the case. Then where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It's a fact that the camera also triggered 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't hear the other ones. Why would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes. There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the windows could have sneezed, triggering the camera. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man, clear. Mm. Well, Mr. Wright, there is no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50 was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you have any. It fired three times. This is my evidence. The murder weapon. Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, then, was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. I mean, I knew that from the start. <laughs> Order! That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. Dot dot dot. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 
eleven fifty. Another at fifth. Another fifteen minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you? Why? Yeah, good question. Uh oh, I'd rather think of something. I better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by twenty-five minutes. Ah! What's wrong, Nick? I have it. I have it. Ah! Remember the case with the steel samurai. Ah, yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya! Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never turn overturn Edgeworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch and I'm going to run with it. Right, I mean, is it safe? No. Safe! We've already gotten a guilty verdict, we have nothing to lose. <laughs> you just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor! Yes, Mr. Wright. The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. No, it hasn't. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? So, you finally realized the truth? There can be no other murderer here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, had the victim, Robert Hammond, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on the boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man on the boat. I admit it's hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. Da -da -da. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 0015. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. <laughs> He's reaching. He's reaching real deep. Dot, dot, dot. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? <laughs> yes. Explain who the two men on the boat are. The murderer... Edgeworth and the murderer? Explain who the two men on the boat are. Edgeworth and the murderer. <laughs> I mean, we're guessing. <laughs> it's Edgeworth and the murderer, and the murderer is is the the boat shop caretaker. <laughs> Man, this is this we're really reaching here. Gregory Edgeworth Yanni Yogi After his arrest, fiance Polly Jenkins committed suicide. Yanni Yogi Yeni Yogi tried to shoot the lawyer. Was Yeni Yogi left handed? Do we know? The murder weapon was fired twice. Fire twice, one bullet. Mm -hmm. 
was Miles on the boat? Yeti Yogi fell into the water. No, 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 no. It, it wasn't Miles who sh who shot. Yeti Yogi tried to shoot Miles. Well, I mean, look. If if we're saying that Hammond is already dead. And these two guys are standing. <laughs> Obviously, it's Edgeworth and the murderer. Alright, th let's not overthink this. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer! After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. What, 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 what? Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous. Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. The murderer's name? Right, it's... It's not Lodahat. <laughs> I don't know? Isn't it Yanni Yogi? <laughs> I don't know. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You... you don't know? Bah, again you waste my time. Yeah, let's keep wasting more of your time, asshole. <laughs> I don't know because he never told us. Exclamation. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did, did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of this crime was not on the boat? Nani? Well then, where did the murder take place? Show the judge where the murder really took place. <laughs> Jeez, we're just guessing here. We are literally guessing. It happened here. Around here, maybe. No, maybe. <laughs> Mr. Right, and we're still maybe. Does this maybe include the reason why the killer would choose that spot? Yes, well, maybe because there is no good reason. The murderer thought we never expected. No. All right, let's try. Let's try again. Is it? Is it in the? <laughs> Here, of course, the boat shops. I mean, look, I was only like a centimeter off <laughs> where he lives. That way, he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. That night he was out on the lake in a boat searching for something. He finds it, then returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, your honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned the boat? The boat job! <laughs> Mr. Wright, what happened that night on God Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor, we may just be making stuff up right now. <laughs> Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. <laughs> we are making it up as we go. That night! The caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his sh shop. Owned. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. 
Then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? The boat shop caretaker. Of course it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice, both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. To create a witness. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and fires again. Then... The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. Dot dot dot. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men had been sh on the boat had been sh had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Mm, and once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop, then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body, and threw the body into the lake! This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on God Lake. <laughs> Bailiff, bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly. <laughs> Very well, while we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. <laughs> Why is he asking questions? Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said? Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? Dot dot dot. What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. <laughs> at midnight? <laughs> Some dude wants to see you in a, in a lake on midnight and you just went? <laughs> something important? Dot dot. I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Your Honor, Sir! Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. Nani? What should I do? Find him quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. <laughs> a search warrant has already been is issued. Mmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him and I want to know who he is. Very well, court is adjourned. <laughs> All right, one more day. December 27, 1.22 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Yay, Nick, you did it! You made stuff up! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's... it's complete nonsense. Like, who wrote this stuff? If you're gonna write a court drama, can you at least have somebody who knows a little bit about courts write the drama? And not just have some guy make stuff up? Oh, this... I can't... It, like, it's, it's entertaining, yes, but I cannot endorse this, you know what I mean? 
day that you did it. Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. That was... He is something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. <laughs> Larry really helped us out, I mean... <laughs> he did. Not because of anything he did, though. <laughs> sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony... Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. They're getting a bit tedious, this story writing. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey Edgeworth! Dot dot dot. Um, Mr. Edgeworth! Exclamation! Did you say something? <laughs> Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little, relax. <laughs> this is him trying to smile. I'm sorry. But I fear it's not over for me yet. Nani do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. Tell me. Tell me what is in your heart. Do you have a crush on me? <laughs> is that why you're always so angry at me? <laughs> Edgeworth? No, there is so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... Hmm, I can't make up my mind. Confess, Edgeworth. Confess your love for me. We'll have a passionate night together, tonight, before the end. <laughs> it's not that kind of story, is it? <laughs> what is this about, Edgeworth? Dot dot dot. It's a nightmare I've had. <laughs> That's almost as good. It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Yeah, you shot your father. <laughs> Alright, it's safe. I'm gonna take a break. And then we have... Another day of investigation and then more trials before this is over. Alright, see you next time.